Greetings, YouTube. I actually had to break out some uh, paper here so you could see the knife against my red bench. <laughs> I didn't think of that when I sat down, but there you have it. Um, today I'm going to talk about the Snap-on folding knife, um, which is 871045. Um, and they have it is 8CR13 MOV stainless steel blade, anodized aluminum handle, stainless steel pocket clip. Um, and a little bit of uh, information to back where how, how to use thumb studs and how to use a liner lock apparently because most people don't seem to know how to do that and a caution warning which is very thoughtful of them so here you go this is snap-on with the famous snap-on um, logo which is you know just their name in a stylized uh, bit of font it does in fact have a single position belt clip it has a single position uh, thumb stud because well you could remove that and possibly roll, turn it around. This side is cut out for the thumb stud and this side is not, so you really couldn't reverse that thumb stud. Um, you have uh, stainless uh, you have stainless steel liners. You have aluminum uh, scales. It has nice pillars there. I like open pillar construction and this pillar functions both as a support and as a stop. And that's a feature I happen to like. Um, the, the astute of you will notice that this blade is not in the middle. Now, when I purchased this knife, the blade was in the middle. But it also had a very stiff action. Um, it was stiffer than I happened to like. So I uh, used a, a star drive uh, driver and a star driver and loosened this up so that the action is better. But in the process, it did knock the blade off center. It's something that I'm willing to deal with. This is a budget knife. This was only $13. I picked it up at a at an at a auto parts store. My wife had gone in there to get some uh, uh, bulbs for her car, which were remarkably difficult to install, and uh, headlight bulbs. And uh, in the process, I poked around and saw this, and it was $13. And I'm like, at $13, bucks, i will give it a try. See if Snap-on uh, has anything uh, you know interesting to say about the whole genre of folding knives. And I'd never even known that Snap-on made a folding knife. It doesn't surprise me. They make tools, and this is a tool. So I'm not shocked that they make a folding knife. And the overall finish on this is excellent. There are no extraneous sharp edges. Everything is is, is um, smoothly rounded. There is uh, a definite feeling of solidity and quality here. And I, I was really impressed by this. I've seen shoddier construction on knives that cost more than this. So they get big kudos for that. The single position pocket clip, that isn't something I'm a big fan of. I prefer uh, multi positions, particularly I'm, since I'm a person that prefers a tip up carry. I like the tip carries like this, as opposed to the tip down carry. Um, the scales are nicely contoured. I mean, that they just look really good. Um, and uh, when once open, they are quite comfortable. Now, the reason I knocked the blade off center so I could do that. This has a remarkably nice action. Yes, it took a little bit of tuning to get that nice action, but it really does have a nice action. And it came out of the, the, the box reasonably sharp. It is not shaving sharp. But, you know, for a $13 knife, it isn't bad. And MO, uh, the HCR MOV of steel, 13 MOV of steel, isn't the greatest in the universe, but it's not shabby. Um, for, again, it's a $13 knife. A lot of the time you'd expect to see something that says 440 with no designation. It's like generic 440. So it was a step up from that. And you've got the, the Snap-on logo there. And then over here you have um, the steel style and the word China. So it tells you that, that they reiterate the steel type on this side. The blade has a, a flat grind with a, a secondary bevel here. It has a uh, I, I have a stone washed finish, it's quite nice, uh, and it has a, a definite nice feel. It's a three finger carry, I mean you're not getting more than three fingers on there. So this is a light duty knife, uh, which you could probably take the pocket clip off and use it as a pocket knife. It's a little on the large side in my opinion for a pocket knife for me, there, but if you were going to throw it into a coat pocket or something, a work coat, this might be well um, w within what you consider to be a pocket knife. Um, and it's a good beater knife, man. I mean, for, again, 13 bucks. You can't go wrong for $13. Now, things that I don't like about it. Um, 
the anodizing isn't the greatest. You'll notice there's a chip right there. And I did that. There you go. It's good. I did that just playing with it. It just with my playing with the knife and it, it, my my ring did that while playing with it. I play with knives constantly. If I'm sitting at my desk watching a video or doing something that doesn't require me typing, I'm usually playing with a knife. And I usually have at least a couple of knives on the desk, my desk, which are my current favorites to play with. I mean, this is this is one of them right now. Um, and the other problem with the scales isn't the anodizing. Again, it's a $13 knife. It doesn't have the best anodizing universe. I can live with that. It's the fact that they are incredibly smooth. I mean, unbelievably smooth. These are so smooth. That, that my bare hand here, it feels like it's just going to, if I were to squeeze too hard, it would fly out of my fingers. It just, it's just too slick. There's no grip on this at all. There's no bite. And because of this, I didn't carry it. Because I knew I wasn't going to be able to get this out of my pocket comfortably. And I can't. Def I definitely can't use this at work. Because I wear gloves at work, which are usually often the one on my right hand is a cotton glove. And it's, I'm never going to be able to get this thing and use it safely. It just would not be safe in my hand. Um, and I think that's a major issue for for your for a knife. You need to have a certain level of grip. It has to have um, the ability to feel comfortable and safe in your hand. And this knife does not have that. So that is the major drawback to this to, to my mind is the scales are just too smooth it is however an attractive knife um and if you have light duty tasks and they're never going to require a lot of strength so you're not concerned with the knife moving in your grip or or you possibly dropping it because you have to cut something a little on the heavier side this may be something you can use or you're looking for a knife to add to your snap-on tool collection this you could do a lot worse than this it is attractive it's nice quality I like the, the thumb stud. The thumb stud has a little machining feature there, and it's uh, tiered, step stepped um, design. And again, I like that. And you can open and close it quite easily. And it has an awesome action. I mean, that is just great. It's just these scales. These scales fail for me. They just don't cut the mustard. Yeah, I, I, I know I'm saying that wrong. It's got to cut the mustard. Um, but we're talking about a knife. Get it? Oh, I forget. Um, so overall, it gets a less than great score because of the scales. If it weren't for the scales, this would be a must-have for anyone that likes budget knives. But because of the scales, you really have to take that into account. What kind of cutting are you going to be doing? And will these scales get in the way of you using this knife safely? But if Snap-on can make this... Maybe Snap-on can make a knife that's a little bit better quality that doesn't have these deficits. So I'm going to poke around and see if Snap-on makes any other knives. And if they do, I will, may well take a look at them.